Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, my name is Dawn Lady. I'm the chair of the Heart of Our City Committee. Thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. Uh, of course, it's nothing like a day with technology and presentation when your technology doesn't actually work. So uh, unfortunately, we will not have the slideshow for today. Uh, we will still go ahead with today's presentations with our speakers. Uh, that just means that uh, our video that we are uh, uh, for live on Facebook won't have the slideshow. We will post that uh, to Facebook, both with the Chamber and downtown BRZ uh, after today's event. And then also for anyone who's in attendance today, we can email you the slideshow. Uh, so thank you for coming today. Um, as I mentioned, that these sessions are broadcast live on uh, both the Chamber of Commerce and Downtown Lethbridge BRZ Facebook feeds. We then turn around and upload these uh, to lethbridge.ca slash downtown. So for anyone who's not here or if you'd like to go back and rewatch if we've missed, if you missed something uh, with any of these sessions, uh, you can do so. At this time, normally I would... I, turn our slide to our lunch sponsor, so we don't have our slides, but I would like to extend a sincere thank you to Streetside Eatery for sponsoring lunch today. Uh, please help yourself, there's lots of food. Feel free at any time to uh, get up and grab uh, some food if you're hungry. I'd also like to uh, let folks know that we do have a registration at the front. There's a little table there. Our social media advertising talked about the first 30 registrants to attend today would be eligible for a free needle pickup kit if you would like so. Uh, that would also be an opportunity if you'd like to get the slideshow to make sure that you're, you have your email address up on there. We are hoping to have the kits available today. Unfortunately, they won't be here until Thursday, so we will be in touch with each and every one of you who've registered uh, to come and pick those up. Either we can deliver or we can, we can arrange uh, how that might be distributed. Uh, additional kits after that will be available to the public to purchase. Uh, the heart of our city through the Downtown Clean and Safe Strategy Program will be uh, subsidizing the kits. I don't know if we've finalized a price yet, uh, but we will make those announcements on social media when the time uh, comes. So today's session, uh, I'll just do a little bit of an intro around what the program, this program looks like. We will then move on. Martin Thompson from the City of Lethbridge will speak a little bit about the needle collection program strategy. Um, we, I'll talk a little bit about what will be included in the kits. Uh, and then Brittany Opel from Arches will talk about needle collection and disposable, uh, disposal 101. We'll have some time for Q&A at the end. Welcome, thank you for coming. Please don't forget to register at the front. So the Downtown Clean and Safe strategy is a city-led strategy to create a positive and unforgettable downtown experience by addressing the real and or perceived notion that downtown is messy and feels safe. Uh, this program was established in late 18, 2018, early 2019. There are 12 programs that are associated with the Clean and Safe strategy. You can learn more about this at lethbridge.ca slash downtown. One of the pieces of this uh, strategy is to develop a business education seminar. There was a subcommittee that was developed consisting of uh, City of Lethbridge uh, folks, uh, LPS, the BRZ, and the Lethbridge Chamber. Uh, we are working on a toolkit for businesses, nonprofits, organizations to be able to help them um, maneuver around clean and safe uh, uh, programs and uh, opportunities within your business. It is designed after a successful LPS and BRZ business watch program that was designed in 2010. We are working on a toolkit um, and all of these sessions will be part of that toolkit and when that is available we'll let everyone know. So uh, at this point I will um, welcome Martin or invite Martin to come on up and talk a little bit about uh, the needle collection program and strategy with the city of Lethbridge. Thank you. I am going to make a little room here. I did have a presentation. Can everybody hear me? Again, Marty Thompson from the city of Lethbridge, and I uh, my portfolio is community social development which is quite broad. It's everything from homelessness to virtually any social issue you can think of seems to land on my plate. 
and what I can't deal with, I forward to Ted Stilson. <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, the, the, the needle collection strategy is one we implemented about a year ago. And it was a response to the, a, a fairly dramatic rise in, in needles within the community. And, uh, and so the first question I would have as a citizen is why? Why are, why are there needles? Why are we giving out needles? And uh, ultimately, it's a, an, an issue that's happening not just in Lethbridge, but across North America. Needle distribution is a tried, tested, and true uh, way of reducing uh, things like uh, HIV, Hep C, and other blood-borne diseases by reducing the sharing or reusing of needles. It, it's really quite simple. From really from a taxpayer perspective, it does save a lot of money because when you share and reuse needles, uh, again, you spread those diseases. You have um, vein damage, significant vein damage. Uh, a, a needle. I actually have a. Uh, a picture that I had started making a slideshow that it shows a needle after one use versus two, then three, and then up to six. And they look at it under a microscope and it was shocking. I was shocked because it sees the damage of that needle even after one use. And of course, when you reuse it, you do vein damage, it turns into an abscess, and typically the, the vulnerable population don't go to a doctor and then it's when you know that something significant happens and then they go to the emergency room and then it's quite a cost to do intravenous and address that and of course the cost of addressing hep c and hiv they're lifelong diseases so the cost just tremendously it spirals so of course needle distribution is meant to reduce that the collateral damage from that of course is needle debris and so, and again, it's in communities across Canada. And so Lethbridge, uh, I can uh, confidently say, was one of the first communities in Canada to really implement a formal needle collection strategy. And it was a multi-pronged strategy. No strategy is perfect, but uh, I, the difference between this year in April and May compared to last year, from my lens only, was night and day. I would get 50 to 100 calls and emails a day about the needle and syringe problem. We will always have, you know, in the foreseeable future anyway, needle debris. And so it's how can we best mitigate that and control it. And so here's what the city of Lethbridge is doing. My eyesight is really bad right now because I burnt my corneas on the weekend because I got chemicals in my eye. And so I'm going to struggle a bit here to see, but I didn't want to miss this presentation. So, because uh, it was it Jarrett? Would Jarrett put up your hand? Jarrett called me about six times. Are you coming? Call me back. And yeah. So here I am, Jarrett. So we have installed uh, 30 tamper-resistant needle collection boxes throughout the city. And that doesn't include all of the plethora of the portable stations that are situated uh, throughout the city. And there's also private organizations, uh, be it government and organizations that will install their own needle boxes, but the city itself has installed 30 of the tamper resistant needle collection bo boxes throughout the city. And we put them in high use areas. And if we need to, we'll move them depending where the, the migration or the, the needles uh, are being found. Uh, we implemented a needle collection program, and that was through Arches. So in, instead of the city, you know, contract or hiring, you know, staff and and uh, you know, especially full-time staff, that's a very cost-prohibitive model for a problem that may not, you know, exist indefinitely. And so we elected the more cost-effective route was to contract an organization, Arches. Uh, to collect the needles and what that means is it's a hotline uh, basically actually it's more than a hotline but ultimately uh, you can call the hotline number and they when you find a needle and they'll come collect that needle and they'll also as part of that work they collect uh, needles from the 30 uh, tamper resistant needle boxes um, they also distribute and collect the Sharps containers, which you're going to see a little demo here uh, in a bit. They also uh, 
do a walking outreach and peer needle collection program. So as they're doing their walking outreach programs, of course, if they see a needle, they'll collect it and, and remove it from our streets. And they do extensive community education and awareness programs, which you're gonna get a bit of that today. And so it's, it's not you know, just the needle boxes. There's a lot of work and, and other projects that go into uh, collecting our needles. In addition to that, uh, we implemented three clean sweep programs through downtown BRZ. We partnered with downtown BRZ. Now, most of you are aware of the, the what I call the original downtown BRZ program where they collect uh, garbage and debris from our downtown streets and they do a fabulous job. Uh, but we said that works so well, why don't we uh, you know, contract them to do needle collection. And so Arches contracted them to do the needle collection in and around the consumption site. And then we have what's called a hotspot program. And so that we actually will uh, take teams of people and, and drop them off in areas where we're seeing a lot of needle debris on a daily basis. And then they'll go and collect those needles. And those change again over time. So we call it a hotspot team. And again, it seems to be very, very effective. Our park staff and other city employees are trained in the safe handling and cleanup of needle debris. Um, and as their regular work, when they find a needle, they will collect it and dispose of it. And then of course the park staff who are quite vigilant about going out and searching for needles because we know that those are critical spaces for our families and our children. And so we're being especially vigilant about cleaning the, the needles in our park areas. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the city has partnered with Arches and we have developed a number of education and training materials that are offered um, to the community through the City of Lethbridge website. And then Arches also offers a safe ne uh, needle handling courses uh, and all city employees um, that uh, may encounter a needle on a day-to-day -day basis are provided training and knowledge on how to clean that needle safely. And then of course we liaise on almost a, on, a, on a weekly if not a monthly basis with key organizations like school districts and so forth. Um, you know, there are some populations that we would consider uh, not that one group is more important than another, but w when you have a, a, a school with a playground and you have a lot of children in the area, yes, we're gonna pay particular attention to make sure that we are vigilant about collecting needles in those areas. <clears throat> So, and then also the, um, uh, we've created uh, through Leth Request a needle app that we're using internally that when, be it Arches or another organization that we're working with or a city employee finds a needle, we can track it through uh, an app. You take a picture of it and we're gonna pilot that app uh, for the community in the near future. When you find a needle with your phone, you can take a picture, it automatically downloads, sends it, we pick it up, and then it sends you a notification. We're not quite there yet. Um, we're still kind of working the bugs out in that, and it's try we're trying to align it with other technology programs that we're working on through the city. Uh, and then we're working with uh, Arches and other organizations regarding needle distribution. And so in its peak, uh, and I have some stats here for you. I thought I had some stats here for you and I must have left them. But in its peak, we were give, when, when I say we, you have to understand that needles are, it's uh, an Alberta health mandated program. It's not the city, it's not Arches, it's not one organization that uh, has the mandate to deliver those needles. It's an Alberta health mandate where they say we are trying to reduce the prevalence uh, again of HIV and Hep C and they work through another a number of groups and organizations to distribute those needles. Uh, such and the, the, the local agency in Lethbridge of course happens to be Arches but they're also distributed through pharmacies. They're also distributed online. You can go online and buy as many needles as you want and they're fairly cheap. So we can't control necessarily all the needles that are going out, um, but we've worked with our partner organizations such as Arches to reduce the amount we give out. And so in its peak, we are uh, giving out in the city about 30,000 were being distributed. And we're down to about that seven, 8,000 right now. So, 
and our collection numbers have skyrocketed with our, uh, our, our needle collection strategy. But you need to kind of take a deeper dive into those statistics that we now have the supervised consumption site, so we know a lot of use is happening there instead of on the street. And so that's automatically going to drop the amount of needles that you see on the street. The other piece is that Lethbridge is a collection point for local communities. So needles are being used in every community, big and small, across Canada, North America. And so when, you know, from Crow's Nest Pass to um, the First Nation areas to Raymond, McGrath, you name it, they, if they uh, have needles there, they bring them to Lethbridge to drop off. And so when you see our needle numbers are exceedingly higher than our distribution, it's because we're a collecting point for other communities. Uh, and again, but we are also are giving out uh, dramatically a lower amount of needles in our community than we have been in the previous years. To give you a comparison, communities uh, similar to size, uh, for example, Red Deer, we're giving out as many as 44 to 50,000 a month needles. And at our peak, we were out a little over 30. So I know that it seems like there you know, is a, a proliferation of needles, but we're, we're not alone in this. It's happening across Canada. And I get a phone call or an email almost on a daily basis from communities. I spoke for an hour this morning to Prince George. What's your needle collection strategy? What have you done? Who's collecting them? And how are you doing it? How are you disposing it? kind of shocks me in a way because this is not a new situation, yet it seems like a lot of communities have not responded. They, they haven't put a, a formal strategy into play. And so, uh, you know, as a city, again, it's really the, the distribution of needles, the, the health uh, economic, epidemic related to that, be it HIV, the drug and substance use issue, is really not a city mandate. But we know that ultimately there's a, a collateral ripple effect that comes from um, those social issues and that we need to respond to keep our community safe uh, and so forth. So, you know, again, we'll always have needles. I'm not going to stand here and promise you that, that the needles are they're, they're going to disappear and you'll never see them. But I have to give the city and our partner organizations a lot of credit because we've really stepped up as a community to address the issue. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going to ask you guys the question, what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing that the needle issue is getting better? Or in your opinion, is it the same or getting worse? And if someone doesn't put their hand up, I'm going to pick on them. And... Far, better. Far better. I mean, that's good to hear. Um, Ted, what are your comments on that? Extremely <clears throat> So that's great to hear. I'm happy if anyone else is not hearing that or seeing that. I mean, I'd love to know that because it's whatever we can do to, to rectify and improve. But in a, in a quick summary, I guess that's the, the collection strategy that we've employed. Uh, and it seems to be working well. I'm just going to take a few minutes to give you a quick overview of some other work we're doing because it's not just needles. Oh, sorry, Tyler. And that makes complete sense because we've concentrated our resources in the downtown area. And again, inevitably, the farther you go from the downtown hub, you know, it, it's organically you're going to see a, a, a lower, you know, or a higher response time. Uh, and also, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's the priority has been though that hotspot area, the downtown, and so. 
what we are, and we're trying to track that. We're trying to see with the hotspot program where those are popping up. Uh, but the farther again you go out, the, it, it gets a little more challenging, but it's still important to know. So, so some other work we're doing uh, as a city is we have been doing a tremendous amount of data collection uh, and we've uh, completed a municipal housing strategy and why is that important? Because we know that we have a high number of folks who are uh, addicted to uh, drug, elk, or drug and substance abuse and a lot of those folks are homeless so addressing that one of the root uh, things we can do is address the homelessness piece so that we can get them the help they need to get them on the right track and so we've now got a municipal housing strategy and we uh, have funding for a 42 unit permanent supportive housing facility for very high complex high needs individuals what does that mean to you in the community? It means 42 of those very high need individuals are not on the street. They're in a, a very structured environment where they're getting the care and support they need and they're not on the street, you know, committing theft, uh, you know, using drugs and so forth. Um, so that's a, a big initiative for us. Um, and then we also did a Lethbridge social well-being needs assessment. And if anyone in the group wants a copy of these documents, uh, they can connect with Jarrett and we can get those to you. And f through those needs assessments, we've created strategies. And, uh, and the community well-being and safety strategy is going to be a lot of work on integrating all of the programs and services we have in Lethbridge. What we found out from that study is we have a lot of programs and services in Lethbridge. We spend a lot of money on these issues. The where we lack is the system planning and integration piece. And it's typical that when you get a lot of groups or a lot of programs working on these global and more complex issues, they're not always connected. And so we know that we're not gonna get more money. I have news for you, government funding is not a growth industry. And so we need to be more resourceful with the dollars we have in that we are very strategic how we spend those dollars, integrate the programs and so that we're that we're ultimately that we're achieving collective impact. Now that's gonna take some time to get that geared up. And in the meantime, we've in implemented what I call really a lot of emergency response initiatives to deal with the problems in the community right now. Because you know some of those longer strategic prevention education strategies take time to come to fruition. In the meantime, we know we've got some bleeding in the neck issues right now. And so we have in, implemented an encampment room. And, and when I say we, it's, it, the city is partnering with a bunch of organizations. And I'm not going to name them all, but it's not a, it's a we. It's a group effort, including downtown BRZ and, and the, the whole bunch of folks. But we're implementing an encampment removal program. We're doing a safe community call center, which is a coordinated call line. We are implementing 30 intox beds. Just got back from the meeting right now about the designing the intox program. And that one is, I think, very key because right now we don't have a facility or a program where we can take our highly intoxicated people. They're either on the street, at the consumption site, or at the homeless shelter. And none of those places are where they should be. They should be in an intox center and in, in, in getting the, in an intox program. So we're setting that up. We're working on the 42 unit permanent supportive housing facility. And in, in addition to that, we're working on a number of other transitional and supportive housing projects, both um, in neighboring communities, uh, such as the Blood Tribe and also in Lethbridge. We have the, um, of course, the Alberta Health Services detox beds have just opened. And as part of the intox program, we're gonna be implementing what's called a social detox program. We've done a lot of work on improving the Lethbridge shelter, uh, including uh, policy processes, hours of operation, staffing. Uh, we're still working on that, uh, but we brought down a group called Alpha House to Lethbridge to help build capacity and provide education and training to make our shelter uh, a better place. But again, key there is right now, 
everybody goes there. Where a lot of those clients are intoxicated, really they shouldn't be there. They should be in the intox program. So once we get the intox program up and running and hopefully in late August, you'll see a little relief come in that area. We have uh, the downtown policing unit. I see we have a couple members here. We've, the city has provided fund, or they've done some reorganization where they've doubled their downtown policing unit staffing numbers. You've all heard about the Ambassador Watch program. That's a new program that was administered uh, through city funding. Um, the diversion outreach team, the DOT team, I'm sure most of you are familiar with. We're increasing, almost doubling the capacity of the DOT team. And that should be up and running here within, I think, you know, within literally within days now. We've purchased another van. We've got a temporary van we're gonna use until we get the new van. And, and so the DOT team is, uh, is up and running. Uh, we've implemented the Sage Clan patrol. Um, we have uh, the Clean Sweep program that I was talking about has been changed and expanded. Uh, where we've added the hotspot team, but we've also added uh, things like the defecation service, where we can clean up uh, um, biohazards, the biohazard cleanup service. Uh, the business uh, safety education program, which is part of why we're here today. And then also uh, crime prevention through the SIPTED uh, grant program, the environmental design program. In addition to the above initiatives, um, the other organizations have, uh, Arches has expanded their um, community outreach addictions program. Uh, they have 24 hour security at the uh, supervised consumption site and for surrounding businesses. Um, and of course they do the clean sweep uh, program and they also help us uh, with the, um, the actual needle collection strategy. So unless you have any questions, that is kind of a quick overview on some of the things we're doing on the city. I know that we can always do more, but uh, I think we've got a pretty good start. No questions? Okay, great. Thank you. Oops. Thanks, Martin. Uh, so uh, the Downtown Clean and Safe Strategy Program, we are uh, looking at purchasing uh, needle collection kits. Uh, we would have a slide now which would show what's included. Uh, and then Brittany will tell us a little bit more after this about how to actually pick up needles and dispose of them properly. Uh, the kits, it's a mesh bag. Uh, there are poke-proof gloves in there. There is a small uh, needle collection um, unit where you can put the needles in and it won't uh, poke you. A collapsible uh, picker, um, plus an information card. Uh, the, the who to call card that we talked about our last session, that will be included in there and then also a little tag about uh, more information. Uh, by having these available, and again today for those of you who are here and you'd like to receive it free, make sure you register at the door. Uh, we'll allow businesses, residences, and nonprofits uh, to take an active role in helping keeping our downtown clean and safe. Uh, and certainly will help uh, facilitate a more responsive action when a needle is found. So you don't necessarily have to call Arches then if you are finding a needle in your back alley in the front step, uh, you're able then to take care of yourself rather than having to call and wait. Uh, so again, these kits are available for the first 30 people who register at the back table and I'm gonna turn it over to Brittany to uh, finish up today, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Opal and I am the Harm Reduction and Outreach Program Manager at Arches. Um, Marty did a fantastic job of doing an overview of all the programs and presentations that we can do. Um, so I just wanted to piggyback quickly off what he said with numbers because I know that people like to hear data and like to know what we are doing with all these programs that we are running. Um, so in 2017, the average numbers, number of needles that we were giving out per month was 19,573 needles. And that's just from Arches in 2017. The average number of needles we were getting in per month was 6,299. 
So we were getting, giving out a lot more than we were getting back in. Um, our yearly return rate, so that's kind of all the months lumped together, was only 32%. In 2018, after we opened the site uh, at the end of February, um, we were giving out on average still about 17,477 needles per month, but we were seeing 18,021 needles come in on average. So our yearly return rate for 2018 was 103%. And again, that has to do a little bit with like what Marty was saying, where neighboring communities will bring their needles in. So it looks like we're getting a little bit more than we're giving out, which is true. And then this year, just from January to May so far, we have only handed out an average of 9,269 needles. So that's about half of what we were doing in years past. And we are getting an average of 10,460 in, which is at a return rate, a yearly return rate so far from January to May of 113%. So I think the initiatives are working. Um, we're gonna continue, and that's just at Arches. That's not clean sweep, anything else that anybody's doing. So we're seeing um, drastically reduced numbers, which we are happy about, but we recognize that they're still out there. So I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration on what to do if you locate a needle. Um, of course, if you are not comfortable picking up the needle, we still have the Arches hotline, the needle hotline that you can call, and we will come collect it for you. We try to be there within the hour. Um, we recognize that that's still a lengthy bit of time, um, especially if you're further from the downtown, we can be a little bit quicker in the downtown core. Um, and as Marty said, we have our community addictions um, or our community outreach addictions program that is now running from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and can do needle collection as well. So if your business opens at 7 and our hotline doesn't start till 8.30, you could give them a call and they can come um, clean up before your business opens. Okay, so if there's no questions before I get started, I'll do the demonstration. And actually, I think there was a, a brief time afterwards to do um, questions and answers. So I'll do the demonstration and then I brought everything. Um, I usually have like a slideshow of what we pick up and what we don't pick up, um, where we go and how to properly do this. So I'll just touch on that briefly too. Um, we will not come collect or clean up any biohazard material. So like Marty said, we've implemented a new um, strategy where there's a team that can do that stuff. So the, the needle hotline is not the place to call for that. You would phone the... It's a, we're, we're still not quite sure. We're trying to coordinate yeah. all of the plethora of numbers that we have. I don't see them. No. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. So we will we will triage between there's kind of three agencies that are working on that stuff. So between you can call any one of us and we'll figure out who needs to get there ideally right now until we know for sure, but we'll post that when we know for sure. Um, and then we will not come and clean up um, any drugs or suspected drugs. So if you find debris outside of your business and there is what you think, you know, preloaded syringes with drugs in them or um, what looks like, you know, white powder that could potentially be drugs, we will not come clean that up. That is still a call to police. Okay. Um, with the needle phone, we will go pretty much anywhere in Lethbridge to collect the needles. Um, Depending on who has the phone, we'll even sometimes go out to Colehurst or Coldale, um, but we like to just stay within the city. We won't go out to places like the dump um, and that stuff, which is why it's very important to make sure you're disposing of the needles appropriately so that they are safe out there as well. So I think with that, I will get started on what you might find in your area and how to properly clean up everything. It's really quick and easy, and then we'll do. So, if I talk like this, can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So I've brought in a display of the supplies that we do hand out at Arches. Um, so these are the things that you can likely find in and around your businesses, um, your homes, things like that. Um, we will come collect pretty much anything that's on here if you phone the needle phone. Um, we do kind of like there to be a needle present, but if there's like a pipe or something like that, we'll still come collect. So uh, you guys can take a look at this afterwards if you'd like. I'll stick, I'll stick around for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, the other thing that I like to show, because sometimes people forget about these things, is that you may potentially find um, the naloxone kits, 
Um, I don't know if everybody's had naloxone training yet or not, um, but we do the training at Arches. You can walk in off the street at any time and we'll provide the training for you. Or if you're interested in having your business or your employees um, have the training, we can come to you and do it for well free of charge. And we bring the kits for everybody too. So they look kind of like a pencil case, um, which can sometimes be confused for a personal sharps container as well because they do look very similar. Um, but this will generally have a sticker on the back or have the red lock something on the front. And in the kit, there are three vanish point syringes. So you might find these needles either used or unused. If they are used, the tip retracts, so there's no risk for poking. If it's used appropriately, there's a button on the top where you just push it and the needle goes in. So hopefully the needles that are using the naloxone kits are retracting the, the points. But there are the three needles, three vials of naloxone. So they're just tiny little things like this. Um, there's gloves, a breathing mask, alcohol and alcohol swabs um, to clean the vials of naloxone. So I'm not going to do the actual naloxone training right now, but just so you know, if you find the kits anywhere in and around your business, you can phone us and we'll come pick them up. Um, we like to use ones that have been handed out and brought back in as demos like this because we often get people to draw up the naloxone and practice shooting in case that they're going to try and save somebody's life at any point that might be um, experiencing an opioid overdose. So, Otherwise, all of this stuff is safe to go into the garbage except the needle. So the needle should still be placed in a container, um, even if the, um, the needle part portion of it has been retracted. Okay? So, again, you can pretty much safely discard all of this in the garbage except for the needles. But if you're not comfortable, give us a call and come again. Um, what's that? Nope, nope. Um, so I didn't actually bring a needle because it's in there, um, but I brought a pipe. So I'll do the demonstration with, um, this is a bubble pipe, we call them. Um, they're generally used for smoking meth. So if you find these, they do have a bit of a risk of still carrying disease as if um, the mouth is bleeding from the person that was smoking and there's some blood left on it, there, there is a risk of disease transmission. With HIV, HIV can only actually live outside of your body for about 20 minutes. It's not a very strong virus, so there's not, like, not likely a chance of contracting HIV from any of the materials that you find because they are generally what we call cold needles or, or dead pipes, things like that. So hepatitis C is a little bit different. That one can live for sometimes up to like two weeks, sometimes up to six weeks, depending on the, um, <laughs> the conditions, but that has to be like pretty pristine for it to live that long. It's generally about a week. Um, but hep C is now curable um, and is cured every time that you contract it. So there definitely are ways to manage hep C. But I will do the demonstration with the pipe. Um, I don't know if I do it on the table. Is that okay? Or is it easier from up here? People want to see. So if you have located this pipe outside of your business, what you want to do is bring, the first thing that you want to do is if you're not going to pick it up yourself, um, mark it and call us so that we know where to find it. So if you say, oh, we found a, a pipe out in the back alley, we're going to go, okay, <laughs> where, you know, like, can you give us some idea of what that might look like? So if you have like a puck can or something that can identify where it is, set it beside it. If you're going to clean it up yourself, you're going to want to put on your gloves. These are just my gardening gloves because I didn't have the, uh, <laughs> the um, kit here yet because they're not until Thursday, but that's okay. In, your, in the kit that you guys are going to get, there will be puncture-resistant gloves. Um, these are just gardening gloves from the And then what you want to do is take your kit, or your container rather, to the needle or the pen. You don't want to go pick it up and bring it to it because that increases your risk for getting poke or for contracting something, you know, dropping it, breaking the glass, things like that. So you want to bring your container to where it is and set it on a safe, stable surface. So whether that's the ground, a ledge, a step, something that's nearby so that you don't have to travel too far. So once it's done, you want to pick it up. Again, your guys' um, tongs that are going to come in your kit are longer. 
they're, they're in extendable ones, so you don't actually have to bend over. These aren't super ideal, but they work in a pinch. And again, we prefer rubber tips over the plastic tips. These are just plastic tip ones, but I will do my best. So you want to pick it up with the smoking part, the part where your lips go, or the tip of the needle, depending on what you're cleaning up, pointing away from you and down. And when you put it in the container, you want to put it that way as well. Okay, just drop it in. And then you close up your container. And once your container is full, you can call us and we'll come pick it up, or you can bring it down to Arches and we'll dispose of everything in it for you. So it's pretty easy. Um, relatively little risk there. Um, but we do, again, understand that people not, aren't always comfortable doing that on their own. Um, one thing that I want to highlight is if you happen to find any of those needles that you see in the um, shadow box there with the tip, say, bent or broken off or just formed in any way, don't try to fix it. Like, don't try to bend the needle back. If you find the needle and the tips exposed, don't try to break the tip off. Um, just leave the needle as is. And same thing if you find the cap nearby, don't try to recap your needle. You want to make sure that if there's the cap and the needle, you put the cap in and the needle in separately. You don't put them, you try to put it back on because again, you're risking an unnecessary problem. Um, yeah, that's basically how to safely dispose of things. Again, um, once your containers are full, we can dispose of them all at Arches. I brought some bigger containers if anybody is interested in taking some of the bigger ones so that you don't have to um, call us as often or, or get anyone as often. We also hand out the, the containers at Arches for free at any time too. So if you want something different, we can accommodate that. I think that's everything. Any questions? Um, I just brought these along because these are some, sometimes um, sizes that we give out to um, people that access our services as well um, that you could potentially find in community. Um, generally, they're taking these ones home, filling them up, and then bringing them back to us. But sometimes people might ditch them in an alley or something, depending on what's going on. So if you happen to find this again, give us a call. We will come collect it. Um, I brought cards for people that might not have the uh, needle phone hotline number yet, and I'm willing to go over any of the supplies if anybody has any questions about it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? So all, a reminder, all seminars are recorded and they are available to view at lethbridge.ca slash downtown. Uh, we are hosting uh, monthly sessions on the third Tuesday of each month, so uh, check the Downtown Lethbridge BRZ Facebook page or the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce Facebook page uh, for details about our next session. Uh, these kits will be available on uh, Thursday, they'll be in, so we'll be in touch with those of you who've registered to sign up for your free, and we'll also be sharing information um, in the coming weeks about how any business within the downtown area might be able to have access to these kits. Um, I would like to thank uh, Martin and Brittany for pres presenting today. Uh, another big thank you to Streetside Eatery for lunch. Uh, please help yourself, there's still lots of food, so if uh, you're not quite yet please take care of that uh, I'd also like to thank all of our sponsors for making this program happen uh, the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce downtown Lethbridge BRZ heart of our city the city of Lethbridge the Lethbridge Police Service and again Streetside Eatery thank you so much everyone have a